Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of Offload Images, and in this video, I'm going to address a question I was asked, which initially surprised me, but when I thought about it, was quite reasonable. And this was because somebody was saying that they'd got a new pigment ink printer, and the results from it were worse than their old dye base printer. And you know, obviously they weren't blaming me for it because they decided what to buy, but they said, well, everybody says pigment ink printers are better. Why isn't my pigment ink printer, my new pigment ink printer, better than my old dye ink one? Well, there's a whole lot of different things. Um, I, I looked at the more general aspects of why your old printer might appear to be work better than your new one in a in another video, but this one is specifically about pigment inks, and the number one answer to it. And I'll cover quite a few details and you know throughout this, but. Um, it's about media choice, paper choice as much as anything. Uh, it's about using the right paper. So, first of all, why might you think I need to get a pigment ink printer? Well, um, they're typically marketed, and you note I use the term marketed, as more professional. Now, that's a catch-all term that means absolutely nothing in marketing, in, in real life. Um, Professional. Um, I used a pigment ink printer to make this giant great canvas print here, 14 meters long. That's me standing, uh, pointing out something to somebody here. That was printed with pigment inks using a professional large format printer. And it's using, you know, it's pigment ink. So, you know, you don't get dye ink printers big enough to be able to print like this. Um, you know, they're all, when you go up in the model range of, you know, Canon and Epson, look at their printers, and you'll see that the higher end ones are all pigment ink. Is that because they're better? Ah, uh, better. Always a problem with using the word better. It needs context. They are different, not necessarily better. So, why get pigment inks? As I say, well, there's the pro angle of it. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. You have to get pro, uh, pigment inks if you want to get, make very large prints. So all these big prints I've got on the wall here are all printed using pigment ink printers. I haven't got anything I could print them on dies. I would be curious to see what they'd look like. Now, I'll show from some print examples as to why I'd be curious to see that. The next bit is prints, pigment inks are more archival. Well, yes, um, with the right paper choices, with the right storage conditions. Yes, your pigment prints are likely to last longer, but good quality dye-based inks on good media mm, might well outlive many of us. Um, it, it, they don't fade like, you know, prints that you got from the chemist when you went to um, get your films developed in the 70s and 80s and you got you come back with your films and uh, with your prints and you looked at them you put them away in a drawer and two or three years later you got them out and they'd all faded um, they are a lot better than that but with the wrong choice of inks and media it's particularly cheap paper your prints will fade far quicker on dye based inks in general certainly also if you use third party inks Pigment inks may be okay, but the dye-based inks, well, if you don't know where they come from, you could find that you put them up on a wall and within a month or two, the colors have started to fade. Um, I'm, I'm just talking about the OEM, or Original Equipment Manufacturer inks here. So Canon inks in a Canon printer, Epson inks in an Epson printer. So you, you've got the, yeah, pigment inks will last longer. I find an awful lot of people worry about archival properties of papers and inks when they probably should find something better to worry about because it doesn't make that much difference to most people. Sure, if you're marketing fine art printing, then you want to make a point of its archivability. Now, I'm, I'm testing because I'm doing a talk in, um, in May. Uh, there's a couple of rolls of paper here. These are Hannah Muller natural line papers. Uh, one of them is uh, based on agave uh, fibre and another one is sugarcane. Um, I'm in the process of testing these. They are matte papers. They work great with pigment inks. These have got no optical brighteners in them. These are museum grade. Although you have to be careful because whenever you see museum grade used in any marketing materials, uh, you know, remember it's being put there to sell you something. Um, always remember that about these terms. What about the color range that you get with pigment inks? Well, 
you can get a good range of colors, but you could also, depending on the mix of, big, of the pigment inks, you might find some colors you don't get so well. Uh, pigment inks, because of their very nature, don't tend to handle quite so well on some papers. Very brilliant colors, light, brilliant colors. Um, but in other areas, they're far better. So for black and white, I will always choose pigment inks because although I may need to fine tune things, I can get much more neutral black and white results from pigment inks. So yeah, for that, yes. But this is a question as to why somebody would think that their um, dye-based inks printer was better. So the paper choice that I mentioned. Pigment inks work really well on so canvas here, art papers like this, Baraita style papers, better quality heavier papers. When you get to glossy papers, the pigment inks may not be so good. And here's a print, um, and this, I do have to look at it at night, it's printed on a glossy paper. And if I look it at, at, look at, it at an angle, I can see the ink where it is on the paper. Now it's not laying there really obvious casting shadows or anything like that, but I can see where the ink is on it and that's a pigment ink print. Um, so on that paper, it, which is a glossy paper, I can see that the inks, that's this black area here where there's lots of ink, is slightly duller than it is on the actual brightness of the paper. Now this is an area where dye-based inks can come really into their element. This particular picture, um, and it's difficult to show, show here on, on the video, um, is printed on a metallic paper, titanium gloss from Permajet. And without, you know, as I say, very difficult to show here, but the yellow of the boat um, that I've got there and some of the blue of the sky has an almost luminescent look about it. Uh, there is no gloss differential, you can't see. This was printed with a Canon Pro 200 with dye-based ink. Now, so one of the reasons why I'm looking forward to testing the new Epson ET 18100, 18100, because that's a dye-based printer, um, an eco-tank printer, and I'm curious to see what it will be like on papers like this. So we've got that, that you know, metallic paper, so it's about paper choice, Glossy papers, quite often things can look better. And also small prints. Um, large glossy prints are quite difficult to handle um, because you get reflections from lights and everything else around them. Uh, whereas the slighter, duller surface of pigment inks, certainly on papers like this, but uh, on other papers as well, the reflection doesn't get in the way, but it's a matter of what you want. So if you want bright, glossy prints that really do just look as if they're back projection almost, or backlit film, um, then dyes work better. Um, it's a tricky one. I was, I was quite surprised when I first printed this one and saw the results of this. And I've got several other pictures which really bring out the glow of it. But it depends what sort of prints you want to make. If you produce a few prints like this and you want them to hand them around and impress people, then having a dye-based printer to do this sort of stuff would be a good idea. But we're talking about general purpose printers, probably. And I know that the person who was, who was asked me about this was comparing Comparing different makes as well. It's all about media choices as to what works. As they, if you want to print small prints on a glossy paper, then dyes are perhaps better for you. R remember, I never ever say something, you know, a particular printer is better without qualifying it. Different, yes. Better, well, it depends on what it is you're looking for. So, if, depending on what you want, a pigment printer, pigment ink printer, may not be any better for you. And if you continue using the same paper, certainly if you've got a, a glossy, a cheap glossy paper that you like printing photos on, and you put that cheap glossy paper into a pigment ink printer, it could look dreadful in comparison to your old ones. Well, tough, you need to change your paper. 
um, that's part of moving through different print technologies and things like that. So um, in general, yes, of course I'll recommend if people want to do big prints, art type prints, particularly on papers like this, um, although dies will will look good on these but if people want to do stuff like that big prints I'll always say yeah the pigment print ink printer is probably better because also it's the better printers as well but if you want to produce nice glowy pictures like this with lots of bright color in it and uh, I've got a version of this particular one I couldn't find the print but I've got a version of this particular print of a disk drive where this is probably one of the best pigment ink based printers and I think this was probably done on Epson P700 if I recall. I know that if I print this particular image on this particular metallic paper with a dye ink it will look metallic. So there you go it depends what you want. So think about why you want to make that swap from maybe from dye base to pigment ink. Um, don't just assume that pigment inks printers are better uh, they might not be for what you want. They may well be, but you have to change. Also, the other thing is when you go up to get bigger printers, better printers, um, I'm afraid you need better quality images to print. They show up issues in your photography, in your editing and things far more uh, when you start making large prints. Certainly if you want to make large, very large prints and uh, that, um, it's one about learning the printer, but it's also about uh, learning how to prepare images, how to take them, how to prepare images for large scale prints. So there you go. Some of the differences between pigment and dye. And always remember that when you're thinking about pigment, separate the marketing speak that's associated with it with what you actually want to do. So yeah, I hope that's helpful. Um, if you've got questions like this, please do ask because it's people's questions that give me the sort of themes for these videos. And um, yeah, the response I get suggests that if one person asks me the question, quite a few others have thought about it or maybe only realise when they see the question. Oh, yes, I wondered about that. So, yeah, I do appreciate the comments and the questions. Please do subscribe to the channel. It seems to be doing well and appreciate that. And uh, thanks for watching.